Hey guys, this is Pierce, creator of Orders of Terror, and I'm bringing you the video on the intro decks. And by the time you're watching this video, the intro decks are long since released on the Game Crafter. You should go and pick one up. If you want to get into Orders of Terror, you can pick one up or get it for a present for someone for their birthday. No matter which one you get, you should be able to have a fun game. That being said, now we're going to go into the deck profiles for each of the decks. We will start off with the Warrior's Might deck. Now, so there are many new cards in this set and many old cards as well. In set two, all of the card artwork is going to be at least as good as these new cards, like Varix, and that's going to be the bare minimum standard for the quality of cards in this new set. And there's going to be no more blocky cards like Brutal Assailant. They're going to be 100% well illustrated. I want to hang some of them on my wall that we've done so far. So now let's get on to the deck profile. In each of these decks, we've reprinted one popular card that goes with either a warrior deck or a mage deck and given them new alternate artwork. The one that we reprinted in the Warrior's Might intro deck is Brave Blader, now with this amazing new alternate artwork. Now let's get on to the new cards. So we have Bearer of the Standard, which is the only commander in this deck. And it's a pretty solid card, just pumps all your warrior order troops you control by 100 attack if he is in your command zone. Phalanx Soldier, who gains 200 attack for each other warrior order troop you control. So potentially a 600 attack troop. Veteran Weaponsmith works well with your other warriors. Once per turn, you can select another warrior you control and it gains 250 attack. Next, we have a nice vanilla 300-300 in k -Earth Soldier. Now we have Varric's Inspiring Marshal. He's a big part of the lore. These dudes are kind of uh, related to the same storyline. Watch out for set two. Hopefully that's going to drop before the end of the summer. Now we have Cavalry Marksman and Frenzied Barbarian, the second card in the Frenzied Cycle that have extremely high attack, but effects with big drawbacks in them so that they aren't overpowered. Tower Shield Warden, who protects all your other warrior order troops you control. Brutal Assailant, when he defeats a troop by battle, this troop gains 150 attack and health. We have Crusher, another card from the original set. Double Gainer, not a warrior, but a very good card in general. Brave Knight, moving on to the plus ones. This is sometimes a plus one, sometimes a plus zero. Double Slasher, another extremely good plus one. These are probably two of the best generic plus one troops in the game right now. Now we have Wrecking Knight, and that is it for the troops. Now moving on to the functions, we have Reckless Rage. You can either use this on your own troops to pump their attack, or on your opponent's troops to reduce their health. Sword in the Stone to stall for a little bit. Stat Swap, Seal of Delta, Battle Fury. Worthy Soldier to pump your Warrior Order troops up. Speaking of pumping troops up, we have Sacrifice. On that same turn, we have Unity Charge. These three cards all pump your troops' attack up, and that's kind of the main focus of this deck, placing big troops and making them even bigger. Now we have a life drain which allows you to sacrifice a troop and then gain health equal to its original health. Medical supplies, a very good card, allows you to recur your dead troops, preferably very strong troops like Brave Knight. Time Bomb to remove your opponent's threats as well as Triple Pitfall, again to remove your opponent's threats and it's very good against the mage deck because they do run some golems in their deck and most if not all golems are immediately defeated by Triple Pitfall because they usually have low attack. Now, moving on from functions, we do have three counters in these decks. Each of them have 15 troops, 12 functions, and three counters. For these three counters, we have Final Ward, Scourge of the Fallen, and pretty much the best one of them all, Soulbind, which is actually played in the meta right now. These counters, I don't know if you can see, but the old counters had much darker activation requirement text boxes, and so uh, it was a lot harder to read them, especially ones that had a lot of text in them. And so now we fixed that with this new product. So that is it for the warrior deck and now on to the mage deck. Also, if you noticed, I have sleeved all of these cards up in Dragon Shield clears because I believe that Dragon Shield is the best company to buy card sleeves from. So if you guys are going to buy card sleeves, buy Dragon Shields. They're the best. Or Ultra Pro Eclipses are comparable. So now on to the deck profile for the Mages deck. Our reprint card here is Sparker. This was a very good mage card back in set one. And now we've given it a new coat of paint, so to speak. I think it looks really nice, although the other card didn't look too bad either. Now we have for the new cards... Dire Channeler, Essence Rebounder, and Zealous Arcanist. This is by far my favorite art that I've done currently that has been released. Now I have a few more Mage Order cards. Nightmare Illusionist, a very good mage. Berserk Warlock, Woodland Druid, which is the first of two commanders in this deck. We have Arcane Conjure and Arcane Assassin to deal with your opponent's counters and commanders. Skill Warper. Now on to the Golems. We have the second commander in this deck, which is Stone Vanguard, another very good control card, and Stone 
Flaming Golem. Very high health for a plus zero. Now we're on to the plus ones. We have Arcane Mentor, who can extra place himself from your hand, and Ether Sorcerer, who can extra place other troops from your hand or discard pile when he's defeated. Now we'll move on to the functions. We have Lava Pitfall to reduce your opponent's troops attack. We have Stat Swap to swap your opponent's troops attack and revitalizing texts. This is especially good played on your Runic Bulwark, another troop that I left inside of this pile of functions. Runic Bulwark is also another card that you get in this deck. Very much needed Mage Golem card to build a Mage Golem deck with. This deck guarantees that you get one, whereas you might have to open lots of packs to even get one from a set one box. Now we have Unity Charge and Unity Charge bumps all your troops' attack up, depending on how many troops you control. Corrosive Shadows will allow you to deal with more of those opponent's pesky counters. Sage's Protection will let you protect a troop on your field. Seal of Psy, if nothing else, will at least let you, but you also get a chance to call the card type of it, so either a function, counter, or troop currently, before you look at it, and if you call it right, then you get to keep that card. And we have Magical Healing Orb, Phantom Thief to steal your opponent's good functions, Dragon Hearted to double your troops attack and ice rod an extremely good card just basically lets you deal 350 damage to any troop on the field killing most plus zero troops and now that we're done with the functions we are going to go on to the counters the three counters in this deck are balanced force soulbind and scourge of the fallen and again a copy of soulbind is included in both decks and they both have the new nice counter look to them. Anyway, I hope you guys all enjoy my review of these two intro decks. Again, link to buy them is in the description. If you want to jumpstart your Orders of Terror collection with a playable deck right off the bat and you're new to the game, these are the perfect decks for you. Links are in the description to the Game Crafter. And I will see you guys in the next video. Goodbye.